Good morning, everyone. You are welcome to today's lecture. And uh, before then, I would like to make a few announcements. The first is that our continuous assessments will be coming up next week, Wednesday. And uh, the area of concentration for the test should uh, be from the first lecture down to, uh, should that be a Kitchoff's law? Yes, uh, uh, no, let me say electric circuit laws. So electric circuit laws. So we don't have to study potentiometer in preparation for the CA and uh, wisdom bridge, you don't have to study those courses. And uh, especially today we have, we have uh, my teacher will be teaching us today. She's my teacher, my boss. And for the guys that say physics is hard, she's a woman that is uh, doing very well in physics. So for those of you that think physics is hard, some uh, women are doing it even better than men. So I would like to welcome Dr. Obed, an associate professor in physics. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Sakwanji. Thank you very much. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I know I'm not expecting to hear a response, but I believe you can all hear me. And today we are going to be discussing I mean, the course is Physics 104, Introductory Electricity and Magnetism. And two lecturers are assigned to this course. Dr. Oshakwade that has been taking this course from the beginning of the semester. And today I'm going to be starting the other portion of the course. My name is Dr. Obed, and I'll be sharing my screen with you in next the title is Concept of Electromagnetic Induction and Applications. Concept of Electromagnetic Induction and Applications. And, and I, as you have been told or might have been taught, an electric current can produce a magnetic field. And if the conditions are right, a magnetic field can also produce electric current. So no current is produced in a loop of wire that is stationary in a constant magnetic field. However, if the magnetic field changes with time, or if the wire loop moves into or out of, or is rotated in the field, a current is produced in the wire. So an electro, uh, electromagnetic induction is a process in which a conductor is placed in a particular position and magnetic field keeps varying or magnetic field is stationary and a conductor is moving. I'll use a diagram to illustrate that now. This is what we mean by that. The magnetic field keeps varying. Uh, let me pick... Um, let me see if I can pick a pointer. Yes. Um, no. You can see that this is a magnetic, uh, a magnet with the north and south poles. And this is a coil or loop of wire. So if, if the magnetic field keeps varying, the, sorry, I wanted to pick a pointer, but never mind. Let's go out of this. Um, excuse me. Um, I want to change the slide, but it's not changing. Um, I think there's something I'm not doing right. Okay. We're here. 
So an electromagnetic induction is a process in which a conductor is placed in a particular position. The conductor here is the coil and magnetic field keeps varying or magnetic field is stationary and a conductor is moving. So the, this is the conductor and this is the magnetic field that is varying. Uh, the next slide. Sorry, slide show. Okay. We are, we'll be looking at a number of definitions in this course. One is the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux through an area A is defined as the number of flux lines that pass through the area. And if the magnetic field B is perpendicular to the surface of the area A, then flux through the area is defined as phi equals to the perpendicular magnetic field times the area. So the flux is expressed in Weber's. Who is putting on his video? You are not supposed to show your face. Okay, thank you for that. So we are also going to be looking at Faraday's law of induction. The concept of magnetic induction is usually referred, as, referred to as Faraday's law. And Faraday's law states that, excuse me. Sorry. And Faraday's law states that the rate of change of magnetic flux with time The rate of change of magnetic flux with time through the circuit is equal to the magne magnitude of the induced EMF in a circuit. And if the magnetic flux phi B through an area bonded by a closed conducting loop changes, changes with time T, a current and an EMF is produced in the loop. So this process is what is called induction, induction. And this can be shown mathematically with this equation. And this is the induced EMF that is derived by Faraday's law. Then if the loop is replaced by a closely packed coil of n turns, the induced EMF is given as the equation epsilon equals to minus a theta phi b over delta t dt. So that's the equation for Faraday's law. And the negative sign indicates the direction of epsilon. You know, we said here that what is, um, okay, sorry. So the epsilon is the induced EMF. So the negative sign indicates the direction of epsilon and hence the direction of current in a circuit. The induced EMF can be increased by increasing the number of loops N of a coil. And the flux can be modified by changing the shape of a coil, either by shrinking it or stretching it in a magnetic field. And when the coil is rotated in a magnetic field, an EMF is induced. It's usually induced in the respective coils. Another important factor to be considered under this topic is Lenz law. It's what is called Lenz law. And this law states that an induced current has a direction such that the magnetic field due to the current opposes the change in the magnetic flux that induces the current. Induced EMF, EMF has the same direction as the induced current under Lenz law. Oops. Yeah. So there is a worked example here. Tijani, Ireto Miwa. Put off your video. 
if you put on your video again, you'll be penalized. All of you that is that are putting on your videos, you'll be penalized. Or we hand over the class to you. Your matrix number is there. You'll be penalized if you do that again. If you either put on your video or you unmute yourself when you are not told to do that, you'll be penalized. So there is a work example on the screen. It says a 55 loop circular coil has a radius of four centimeters. It is oriented so that the field lines of a magnetic field are normal to the area of the coil. The magnetic field is varied so that B increases from 0 0.2. Who is smart? We will, are you not supposed to register with your name or matric number? Are they allowed to? You are supposed to register or sign in with your name or matric number or name and matric number. Although it's a very large class, okay, but if you were to be a smaller class, such a person will be expunged, will be removed from the class. But you can get away with it now because you think it's a large class. So I want you all to work this out now. I'll give you two minutes to do that. Although I'm, I'm not seeing you, but I'm giving you two minutes to work it, do the workings before I show you. I think there's a solution there, let me see. No, there's no solution. <laughs> so, this is a 55. You can write it down in your notebook and work it out. You can send your solution to, to, the, to, the, to me personally or to the message. Send it as a message. Send your solution as a message. So you have two minutes to do that now. A 55 loop circular coil has a radius of four centimeters. It is oriented so that the field lines of a magnetic field are normal to the area of the coil. The magnetic field is varied so that B increases from 0 0.20 Tesla to uh, Tesla to 4, 0.45 Tesla in two milliseconds. Take note of milliseconds. Milli is 10 raised to power minus three milliseconds. That's two times 10 raised to power minus three seconds. Find the average induced EMF in the coil. Find the average induced EMF in the coil. I hope everyone is doing that right away. Okay. One minute more, we'll go on to the next topic or the next slide. Whatever your answer is, you send it as a message. Thank you. So we go on. applications of um, electromagnetic induction. Some applications of electromagnetic inductions are electric motors, electric generators, transformers, credit or debit, debit card readers, et cetera, et cetera. But in your course contents, you are supposed to look at electric motors and generators and uh, transformers. But if uh, time permits, we can look at credits or debit card readers, which you are used to. Like the POS, you go, you do your POS and all that. How does it work? What is the physics behind the use of the POS or the card readers? So it uses the principle of electromagnetic induction. And we shall also look at that as a modern day example. So, We'll start with number one, the electric motors. Electric motors do much of the world's work, whether you believe it or not. So there are forces behind this work that is usually done by electric motors. And um, the forces that a magnetic field exerts on a wire that carries a current, that's the force behind electric motors. 
So an electric motor is a device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. And by now, I believe you know what electrical energy and mechanical energy means from your previous uh, courses, physics courses. Electric motors are important components in electrical fans, refrigerators, mixers, washing machines, computers, MP3 players. These are things that you are used to and so on and so forth. Everyone is used to electrical fans. They are used to refrigerators. Even if you don't have one as a student, you, 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 when you go to buy your drinks and all that, you say, oh, I want a cold drink. Where do they bring it out from? Of course, from a refrigerator. So a mixer, blender at home to blend your, your stuff, tomatoes and all that, washing machines, all these use electric motors. So electric motors work on the principle that when a current carrying conductor is placed in an external magnetic field, it experiences a force. That's the principle by which it works. Again, I'll repeat, I'll repeat that electric motors work on the principle that when a current carrying conductor is placed in an external magnetic field, it experiences a force. Now we are going to use a simple diagram to illustrate this. Um, a rectangular coil of copper wire is placed between the two poles of the magnetic field. These are the two poles of a magnetic field. This is the North Pole. This is the S Pole. These are magnets, okay? This is a magnet and this is a magnet. A, B, this A, B and C, D are perpendicular to the magnetic field. You can see that they are perpendicular to the magnetic field. The two ends of rectangular coil are connected. Two ends of rectangular coil are connected to two split rings. This is a split ring. This is also another one. This P and Q, they are called split rings. So the two ends of the, this is a rectangular coil. This is, you can see that the shape is like that of a rectangle, okay? So this rectangular coil, this is a coil, is connected to these rings. You see, it's like a ring. This is like a ring, all right? So they are called split rings or commutators. An axle is attached to the inner insulated part of the split ring. This is an axle that is attached to the inner insulated part of the ring. That means the inner part of this ring is insulated. The inner part is insulated and the axle is placed there. It's attached to the inner insulated part of the split rings. The external conducting edges of P and Q is this one and this one, touch the two conducting brushes X and Y. X and Y are connected to, to a battery. This is a battery and this is the key to open or close the battery. So you can see that the battery is directed, directly connected to X on this side and to Y on this side. And um, let's see what happens next. When the switch is closed, current enters the coil A, B, C, D through X and leaves through Y. So go back to that. When the switch is closed, current enters through X, goes that way and comes out from here. The, the direction of force follows Fleming's left hand rule which I believe you must have been taught. 